Hey MAGA, on behalf of Blue Voters, I just want to say congratulations. We are so excited that you won. Truly, we are. I mean, the things you guys have promised, we know are going to make our lives so much better. And I cannot wait till the war ends in 24 hours. I mean, that's going to be lit. I can't wait to get a concept of a health care plan actually into a health care plan. Because I do need health care. And I know you guys are going to get that done. ASAP. I'm so excited to have electricity that's going to be half the price immediately. I mean, I can't believe how fast he's promised this stuff. That's what is like life-saving for me, right? Groceries are going to be cheap. I mean, I think they're going to be like practically free. Even while you go manage to round up all the people that got us the food. I mean, that's brilliant. And then let's see what else. Cheap rent. Yes. Lower cost in housing. You got this. Higher wages. I didn't hear about that, but I trust that you're going to get that done, right? Oh, gas. I'm thinking a dollar a gallon, 75 cents. That that works for me. But whatever you guys think is best, because you know it's best. And I know you're going to get this done. And I can't wait to get inflation down to like nothing. I mean, you guys are so good. He's the best businessman in the world. Why won't this happen? Why shouldn't this be done like, I'm thinking end of January, end of first quarter for sure. Either way, we're here to watch because you guys got this handled. We're just going to sit back. We're just going to watch because you're going to be so good at this. It's going to be so easy, right? Yeah. And if it isn't, we'll be here too because we remember everything that was said. We remember how this went. But until then, thanks for winning. Hello, Italian Americans. I have to apologize to you because I got a lot of crap yesterday for putting these signs. As I said yesterday, these signs in the recycle. I would never do that again. It's very, very bad. But I have to say, this sign does not belong into the recycling. But it does f***ing belong into the regular garden. Vaffanculo! Hello, hello everyone again. And welcome back to another series of the classic law of F around and find out especially with Trump supporters who are exclusively in a journey through the find out phase. Everything I'm about to show you in this series is as a result of people who voted for Trump doing zero research before voting for him. It's crazy that these people were given the questions and the answers to the final exams and they failed woefully. It's pathetic isn't it? With all these F around and find out stories, there seems to be some misunderstanding with Trump supporters as to why people are calling off family members, not wanting to talk to people, not coming for the holidays. Listen to this story that I got from X, where a father who is a Trump supporter is whining on social media about his children cutting him off because he voted for Mr. Trump. Leave your thoughts and comments down below. This Trump supporter, who is also a conservative, posted, My three daughters all voted for Harris in Oregon, a state that gave all its electoral college votes to Harris. Two of them have now stopped speaking to me, and one is boycotting Thanksgiving, because I voted Trump. I did not tell them how to vote nor ever presume to argue or convince them that they are misled by propaganda. I let them vote how they wish. It sucks that I must now suffer their childish and frankly rude behavior merely because they believe my one vote harmed them or their rights in some way. Liberalism really is a mental disorder. Wow, this Trump supporter is out of touch. First of all, for saying that he led his daughters to vote how they wish. Like, come on. Secondly, I don't think that your daughters or anyone thinks that your one vote matter. It's very obvious that you're not getting the point. The point here is your moral seems to align with Mr. Trump. You voted for someone who is morally against everything that your daughter stands for. It's not about your vote, sir. 
it's all about you not standing up for their rights. I mean, your daughter's rights. I have to say this because it's all that I could think about on my way to work today. Um, I'm not coming on here just to about Donald Trump being elected, right? I get it. That's who the people voted for. Fine. Um, but I just want to make sure that at least a few people understand this. Um, a lot of people that I spoke to who did support Trump, the reason that they said that they did was because they had more money in the bank when Donald Trump was president, which I get it, man. Times are hard for everybody. So I, why wouldn't you vote for someone who's going to put a little bit of extra change in your pocket? Um, but if by some means he is able to put a little bit of extra change into the pockets of the middle to upper middle income households, I just need to make sure that you guys understand where that money is coming from because it's not coming from the rich, right? Because he's cutting taxes on the rich. So it's, it's not coming from them. Um, and it's not coming from the government because his current economic plan is going to put us in a couple trillion dollars in debt. So it's not coming from them. Where is that money coming from? Well, Donald Trump has proposed that we cut funding for Social Security and Medicaid, which if it isn't already clear to you guys, that means that the extra change going into the already semi well off pockets is coming from the low income households, from the legal immigrants of this country, from the elderly, from the disabled, from the veterans. It is coming from people who are already struggling. So while you or whoever is enjoying the little bit of extra luxuries that you might have in the next four years, understand that your funds for luxury was someone else's funds for their necessities. That is someone's rent. That is someone's health care. That is someone's food. That is housing. That is food. That is money that people legitimately need it. And instead, that funding is being cut, right? so that you might have a little bit more change and the rich can continue to get richer. So no, if you voted for Trump, I get it that you might want a little bit of extra change in your pockets, but please just remember for the next four years that while you're living lavishly, someone might be homeless and hungry. Y'all, it's already started. Like definitely F around and find out season is in effect. So right now, like I live in Kansas City, Missouri. So right now I was just reading this news article about how this woman who is who has completed her nursing training, how she can't get licensed in the state of Missouri because she's a DACA recipient. So if you don't want know what DACA is, like, you know, that's a temporary status to allow undocumented people to stay in the United States. Well, the thing is, even though there's a federal law that allows DACA recipients to receive, you know, licensure in like the states, Missouri is saying, uh-uh, I don't care. You don't, you're not a citizen. You don't possess a green card. We're not going to let you have a license. So literally this woman is having to, you know, go through this. But you know what the irony of this situation is, is that this woman, <laughs> I feel like this is very interesting to see how certain people from certain communities view themselves as like, like better than people of a similar demographic. Like one of the things that this woman was saying was like, I don't agree with people not being vetted under the Biden administration and people just coming in and they're all criminals and stuff like that, the traditional rhetoric, right? And I'm just like, lady, do you not understand you trying to play this game of siding with, with your enemy? It's not working out for you. It doesn't matter. At the end of the day, Biden was making sure you could work. Under this administration uh, with the hot Cheeto man, you not going to be able to work. You going to have to go to a, a blue stem, a blue friendly state that will hire you. That means you got to leave your family. Talking about she's not leaving. So you did all that work, paid all that money. I bet you those student loans are due only for you not to get licensure. It's insane. And, and you know, a lot of people are going to start regretting their, their vote. Like, guys, it finally happened. It finally happened. Two YT women showed up to my front door and they knocked on the door and I walked outside and I saw their propaganda right away, which was GOP. And um, I'm like, hi, hello, can I help you? And they're like, is Mrs. Such and Such still here? I'm like, no, this house was purchased last year. My name is, how can I help you? She's like, oh, can I have the spelling of your name? Sure, give her my spelling my name. And she's like, your plate say veteran, is your husband home? I'm like, I don't have a husband. And I'm the veteran, how can I help you? I bought this home with my VA loan. 
Bet you're shocked, but yeah, it's just me. Huh? Oh, really? Yes, ma'am. No man in this equation. I own this. Shit. How can I help you? She <clears throat> went on to talk about Donald Trump and all this, and they're like, why don't you like him? I'm like, I have major reasons. One is because, you know, he's a great fist. That's my biggest. Two, he has 34 felony counts and he's running for president. And somebody who may made a mistake 30 years ago can't get an apartment. And I'm like, three, he lies about everything. Can't tell the truth. Four, he just admitted that the election was not stolen. And five, I don't like how he regards veterans at all. Not one bit. And she started to run her pipe real quick. She's like, you know, the families invited him. I'm like, well, that's not what he said. He threw them under the bus. And why are those 13 more important than the 68 that died under Trump's watch? And she couldn't answer my question. She couldn't answer it. They couldn't get off my porch fast enough. They could not believe that another YT woman was telling them about their president. And then they tried to run their mouth again. I'm like, look, this man made fun of people who got maimed and get the Medal of Honor and called the Medal of Freedom more important than the Medal of Honor. I was like, don't f***ing go there with me. Plus, I lost all kinds, all kinds of friends in Afghanistan trying to help build their government. The dog won't leave me alone every time I make a video. But anyway, a lot of American blood was shed to help Afghanistan build a government to escape the Taliban. And then you have this orange go and make a deal with the fucking Taliban. Like what we did was for nothing. I can't wait to see him run the out here. I'm waiting. I'll post it. Toodaloo. Latinos for Trump, it is time to embrace the consequences of your actions. I've always been a firm believer of fighting fire with fire. If somebody goes low, I'll go lower. Now, with that being said, I know for a fact that most Latinos for Trump have undocumented family members, whether that be their parents, siblings, aunts, uncles, etc. So if you know of a Latino who voted for Trump, I urge you to call this number and report said family members. It's time that these Latinos for Trump get a taste of their own medicine and a taste of poetic justice. Now I know what you may be thinking, Angel, this is extreme, and I agree, but extreme problems call for extreme solutions. And unfortunately, many innocent people are going to be affected by this, but you can't be that innocent if you raised a Latino for Trump. And before all of the Latinos for Trump come at me all angry, this is what you wanted. This is what you voted for. You should be happy. Let me see that smile. But there you have it, guys. Once again, there is that number. You know what to do. It's time that these Latinos for Trump learn the hard way. But anyways, let me know what you guys think. So do you all think it's time for the Latinos who voted for Trump to learn the hard way? Let me know your thoughts and comments down below. Next, I got this post from Reddit and it says, Am I the hey ho because I want to see my friend's family members get deported? Mm. What do you all think? The individual who posted this said, I have an acquaintance who is Hispanic. He voted for Trump because Jake Paul and Joe Rogan like Trump. He also wants the wall. His parents crossed the border and he was born here. He thinks his parents are basically legal. Am I the hero for wanting his illegal family members deported? I'm also a Democrat. Also, how would one, hypothetically, get someone deported? Oh boy. So this individual wants to know if he is an hero for wanting his friends illegal family members deported leave your thoughts and comments down below it finally happened it finally happened i saw propaganda in real time so let me explain people ran around saying the reason they voted a certain way was for a better economy for cheaper gas and groceries they they have to have that they aren't doing well they need cheaper gas and groceries but now, people who will be making the same exact amount of money, who aren't going to be doing any better, are now running around saying, I am okay with paying more money for gas and groceries because the more money I'm paying goes to protecting the border. And unfortunately, that's not true. Really, all you're doing is paying more money for the same product. 
you have just increased the product. The extra money you are spending is going to buy the product. It's not going to anything else because they've increased the price of the product through tariffs. Like, honestly, it's probably not even me worth saying that to begin with because the people who, like, want to justify this will always justify it and they, they're not listening to this, so I shouldn't have even bothered explaining what's happening, but whatever. So this reminds me a lot of George Orwell's Animal Farm where, you know, they were like, our lives are miserable, we need to make a change. So they make a change and then they end up being even more overworked, more hungry. And then they're like, we're, we're more overworked, we're more hungry. And then the pigs are like, no, you're not. You're doing great. Like, life is better now. Don't you see how life is better? And then the animals are like, you're right. Life is better. We are doing better. Life is so much better. We are doing better even though they were doing worse. And everyone who read that book was like, how do they not see it? How can they not see it? And the truth of the matter is they can't see it because they will use any amount of justification, any amount of thoughts, words to justify everything. They don't want to be reasoned with. They just want to think everything that is going on is true. They don't want to look into it. They don't want to figure it out. And that's really the truth of the matter is the... FAFO, it's it's not really going to work out to the people who actually need to find out because they are justifying it for themselves. They will figure out any way to make it better. They'll be like, no, I'm so glad we're paying more money. Oh no, I, I am eating more. I am less hungry. I am whatever. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter because they are justifying anything and everything to make it so they're happy in their heads because nothing will ever be figured out for them. There's only one thing you need to know about the guy that Trump wants to have run the FBI. He wrote a children's book called The Plot Against the King about the investigation into Russian collusion in the 2016 campaign. The Plot Against the King in the Nine Levels of MAGA Hell. Writing a children's book to indoctrinate kids with the idea that Trump is a king who was persecuted unfairly by the Justice Department? That's a tenth level. Cash Patel is nuts. This dude looks at police departments the way Matt Gates looks at high school swim teams. He wants to fire senior FBI leadership and replace them with Trump loyalists. And he has already stated that he wants to command local police departments across the country to get in line. But there are two things standing between Cash Patel and the FBI. One of them is the current FBI director, Christopher Wray, who is serving a 10-year term that doesn't expire till 2027. Now Trump is asking Wray to step down, but he doesn't have to. If he does cave and steps down, then it will be up to the Senate to reject Cash Patel. Everyone in the country needs to tell Christopher Wray right now he's doing a great job and it is his responsibility to the country to stay in his position. I see a lot of hate towards Mexican labor, all right? So let me run something by you real quick and show you why there's so much Mexican labor. So right here, I've got a gooseneck trailer and everything that I need to be able to go get stuff to build a fence. Me and my neighbor over there had a dispute over a property line right here. He had a fence running about a half acre in my yard. Found out after we got surveyed that I was right and he was wrong. So I tore the fence down, I'm building a new one. It's pretty simple, it's good conditions. Goes from right here, straight to that post they just put up, then turns and goes straight to the other side of my yard. So naturally, I got on Facebook, I got a buddy of mine that I've worked with a couple of times. He builds fence on the side to make a little extra money. He's a white guy. Called him, I said, hey man, would you be interested in coming out here and building this fence for me? He said, I'll, I'll talk to dad about it and I'll let you know something tomorrow. That's been about three weeks ago and I heard back from him. So right down the road, there's a farmer that has a Mexican guy that works for him that oversees all of his properties. He came driving my own tractor today. I hollered at him. I stopped him. I said, didn't you tell me before you had a buddy that builds fence? He said, yeah. He gave me his number. I called him. The next morning, he showed up at my house, want me to show him where the property line was at and what I wanted to do. The day after that, he shows up with six guys and a backhoe. I think he's already back there driving posts. And a backhoe and gives me a quote. I said, go ahead, man. You showed up way quicker than everybody else would even get back with me. Do the job. And here we are, less than 48 hours after I offered this man this job building this fence. 
and he's already halfway done driving the post. Showed up unannounced this morning with like a half a dozen guys and a backhoe and went to work driving post. They all look good, follow the terrain real good. They're all nice and level, and it looks good. So stop turning down work as a white man, and then when Mexicans come in to steal all your jobs, that's on you. So Trump just released his 100-day agenda, uh, which includes tax cuts, but doesn't mention for whom, cuts to social programs, including food stamps. I'm sure that's going to go over well. Um, but no mention about tackling the housing crisis or the cost of food or anything that people actually thought he was going to be able to do um, or thought was going to happen when he took office. Um, can't say that I'm surprised because I knew he wasn't going to be able to do jack shit about any of that stuff. Um, president doesn't have any control over that. <laughs> And I don't know why you guys thought he did. Breaking news. Two MAGAs get fact-checked by the produce manager. This is great. This just happened just about 20 minutes ago. I was shopping in a, a grocery store here in the Fort Lauderdale area that's well known for its fresh produce. And as I was shopping for my items, I saw these two MAGAs. Um, I would say there were two guys in their 50s. I'm wearing their MAGA hats. And they were all crowing about how Trump was going to make America great again and how Trump was going to bring down prices and cut inflation and all these type things. And But then they were complaining in the store about the prices of the fresh produce. And so the, I guess one of the managers or the fresh produce manager, somebody walked by. And so one of the MAGAs says to the, 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 the manager in the store that, um, that they can't wait until... Um, January 20th when Trump is going to lower the prices on goods because he all of a sudden becomes president. They think he magically can do this just like Biden was the one who caused all the prices to go up just because he happened to be president. Complete untrue, but that's another story. And so the the, the guy kind of looked at him and said, you know, sir, what, what do you mean? And um, he said, I, I don't believe that's going to be correct. And, and the produce manager says something back. He says, you do know that Trump has proposed to increase tariffs on Mexico by 25%. And many of our, our fresh vegetables and fruits all come from Mexico. You're gonna be paying higher prices, sir, under this tariff um, proposed by Trump if it goes through. Their prices won't go down because, and, and, and the guy goes, what? He said, Mexico's not gonna pay for it. He says, no, sir, you're gonna pay for it. We're gonna pass those prices on to you because our importer is gonna pass those prices on to us. You're gonna pay more. And the two just looked at each other like they were in shock. These people are complete idiots. I mean, they are operating with burned out light bulbs. Love to hear from everybody. Love to hear from your thoughts. Love to hear from my Democrats and my MAGAs, my crazies and my cuckoos. Y'all are definitely not gonna get what you thought you voted for. And lower prices, if these tariffs go through, Oh, you're dreaming. You're dreaming. Keep smoking whatever you're smoking. Not going to be true. And I'm sure you'll try to find a way to blame it on Biden, even though all the problems that we had under inflation under Biden all came from Trump under his collapsed economy, 15% unemployment because of the COVID pandemic and because of the pipeline shutdown, all because of Trump's poor handling of things. But you all can't connect the dots. Love it. Love it. Love it. You're going to love these prices if these tariffs go through. Thank you, Trump. Nothing like having an orange Jesus around. All these evangelical men claiming to care about life until they get their mistress pregnant. Meet Jason Miller here. Yeah, I know. They all look like that. Jason here worked for Trump as a campaign manager. And Jason got his mistress pregnant. And of course, Jason, an alt-right evangelical Christian, showed up at his mistress's apartment with a smoothie. How sweet. Only it was laced with mifepristone. You know, the abortion pill. Rather than keeping it in his pants and honoring his vows, Jason had an affair and got her knocked up. But when she didn't want to have an abortion, he decided to take matters into his own hands. And the mistress known as Jane Doe drank the smoothie and it induced an abortion. She bled so heavily, she almost ended up in a coma and yes, lost the child. But of course, that's not where it ends. I mean, he's he's a Trump aide. So of course, he's being accused of gra trafficking, battery and abuse. Because, you know, these evangelical types who claim to care about life, but really they just want to force people to give birth, unless those people are their mistresses, and it'll make them look bad. In which case, they have no problem ending a f***ing pregnancy. 
So obviously I am a middle-aged white woman living in suburban America. I make a good living. My husband makes a good living. And because of my outrage at the election and the fact that we've nominated and put up for a second term a convicted felon in they've asked me, like, what am I going to do? Um, in the long term, honestly, I haven't figured it out yet. But in the short term, I know that I can do uh, several things that make me feel like I'm in control at least a little bit. Uh, the first thing is I was turned on to an app by my good friend on this app, Bexter. She pointed me in the direction of Goods Unite Us. This is an app that tells you all companies and their affiliations and how they donate their money politically. I, from now on, will be living for this app. Um, any companies that are donating to all red um, you know, donations, uh, whether that's down the ballot, local, um, up to presidential. Uh, if they're donating to Republicans, I'm not buying your product. So that's the first thing I'm doing. I'm controlling um, my spending and basically putting it um, in areas where I know that those people aren't actively voting against me, uh, other women like me, women that are, are black women, Latina women, all anybody, anybody identifying as a woman, trans, gay, lesbian, um, all of us marginalized, I guess, groups. Um, and I know that those people are going to be affected by the next four years in far greater numbers than myself. I am aware. However, I'm going to use my white lady privilege to do whatever I can to help because I voted for her, not for him. The second thing that I know that I can do is I am not going to donate my time, my efforts, or any goods to charities that um, will benefit people that voted against me and those marginalized groups. So I will be focusing my attention this holiday season to whoever uh, those marginalized groups are that need help. I will be aiming my efforts in that direction. And the third thing I am going to do is I am not giving MAGA any more air. Um, if they are fire, I am water. We will cancel each other out. I have no interest in speaking or debating with you. There's really nothing to talk about. This is your FAFO era. You guys, this is what you wanted. And unfortunately, this is what you're going to get. I don't think you were well informed but this is on you. Best of luck. So I went grocery shopping last night and I ran into one of my son's teachers. He's a good friend of mine. And I said, keep your ears open in the hallways. Because my son came home upset because he said that there's students that are going around calling black students the N-word, but also calling them slaves. They're also saying racist things towards my son. And they're also harassing little girls, saying, your body, my choice. Where does that come from? And he wasn't surprised. He said, have him get me a name. Just one name. Because the principal is not messing around with this. He said that seven kids, seven, have already been suspended for ten days. Since the election. These are 6th, 7th, and 8th graders. And then his wife also works in the schools and says her kindergartners, her kindergartners, she's hearing the same rhetoric from 5 and 6 year olds. Elections have consequences, people. And parents, you need to do the right thing and teach your kids that hate has no place in this world and teach them how to defend themselves and how to stand up for others when they are being mistreated. This is just the beginning and it's going to get worse. The fact that a large majority of this country doesn't realize this country is still, still rooted in deep racism, misogyny, hate, bigotry, homophobia, It's mind-blowing to me. Because all of the true colors are coming out now.
So if you didn't see it before, pay attention. This wasn't about the economy. This is about people's hatred for people that don't look like them. That was touching. And I hope you all enjoyed this video. But before I end, I just wanted to say this. Whatever you are facing is not bigger than you. The problem is temporary. The challenge is a stepping stone to your greatness. The fear is a shadow of your potential. The setback is a setup for your comeback. You are stronger and more capable than you can ever imagine. Every experience you have ever had got you ready for this moment. I mean, for now. Don't ever shrink to fit the struggle. Always stand strong and rise above your struggles. Remember this. Always believe in yourself.